Mr. Kareem, thanks for joining us and congratulations on your new appointment. Now we've agreed we're not going to delve into too much of the technical detail while Mr. Kareem plays catch up and speaks to his stakeholders, but we are going to put him down in a few weeks time to answer your questions about the ICT industry. But for now, we're getting to know you as an individual. So tell us, Mr. Kareem, what are three things you think the public should know about you? One is that I've been in the struggle for over 40 years now. Mm -hmm. Uh, two is that I'm a journalist and I've edited publications of our newspapers for a very long while. And three is that while I think I'm decisive, I certainly do so as far as possible consensually. My heart is really in local government, mm -hmm. uh, although my mind is here now. <laughs> by necessity. My body is <laughs> and I will do my job as uh, required by the government and the majority party and the people out there. But uh, since the mid 80s, through the United Democratic Front structures, I was in the civic movement. I was secretary mm -hmm. indeed of the what we call then Peter Marisburg Combined Civic Association. So obviously I've been in the sphere of local government for the most part of the period from 1985 onwards, but for a stint as chair of public enterprises and then two and a half years as a chair of justice. Okay, let's move on to some of uh, the questions from our audience now. Yes. So we have a few tongue-in-cheek questions. One yes. is from a reader who, given the scandal surrounding your predecessor, wants to know what does your girlfriend do for a living? Well, my partner <laughs> is a researcher and a lawyer. And she is she's not likely to be involved in any, any departmental she's, she's, tenders. She's a member of the ANC, regrettably not the Communist Party. Oh. Uh, but uh, she can't switch on a cell phone uh, <laughs> very easily. Uh, and, and I think the prospects of her having an interest uh, uh, in, in tenders, if we manage our household finances, anything go by, are dismal. Another reader, Fiona Zerbst, wants to know, what do you read? Ah, somebody asked me yesterday, uh, what, where were you when uh, you were notified that the president might want to appoint you? I was actually on family leave, reading Khalid Hussaini's and the Mountains Echo. Oh, his latest novel. Yes. I, I, I'm a great, uh, very interested in novel reading. I teasingly said to somebody, I think, well, one of the reasons I got uh, deployed here is my love for the written word. Uh, uh, you know, I, I like reading novels whenever I can. That's my great interest. And I also actually interested in like reading newspapers and... Uh, the Mail and Guardian? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I really read you with enormous interest. A lot has been made about your party, the SACP's influence in this cabinet reshuffle. Everyone's kind of talking about that. One reader, Jeff Delaney, thought that this question may amuse you. He wants to know, how does a communist plan to fix the telecommunications sector? Well, if the under uh, uh, subtext is, are we going to nationalize everything? No. <laughs> In the first instance I'm here, I make no apology for being part of the Communist Party. I've been a socialist since the age of 17. Uh, I'm not a Stalinist. Uh, and um, uh, insofar as their concerns about, well, here's this guy from the Central Committee and that horrible word, Politburo of the Communist mm. Party, who's going to steer the media in the direction of state control. And in the first instance, I don't decide policy alone. Mm. Uh, I'm guided by the ANC and the alliance as a whole. Final question from one of our readers, and this is something you've spoken about before. You were involved in the decision to disband the Scorpions from Parliament's yes. side. Do you regret that decision? Firstly, it's an inappropriate question because I'm bound by ANC policy. And in Polokwane, some 3,500 delegates took that decision. So we had a mandate. However, there was nothing in the Polokwane resolution that set out what would substitute for the Scorpions. It is not as if, as I've gone on record to say, that we were gloating about the uh, disbanding of the Scorpions. Uh, it was regrettable. It was meant to be the pride of the nation. It was meant to be this elite fighting unit. And for a variety of reasons that there isn't time now to discuss, uh, they became the source of considerable division. As a former journalist, your thoughts on media freedom? Obviously, it's crucial to a democracy. If you look at us, we fought for it, together with journalists. And I think it's entirely possible uh, to have a fully free, vigorous media in South Africa, which is what we need, but also one that is responsible. I think there's the constitution that guides both government and the media, and of course the public out there, there's no intention to change that. And within the confines of the Constitution, I think we can find each other, journalists and the media generally, and the government. Well, thank you so much. That's all we have time for, and we really appreciate your time. Thank you indeed. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye.